I am Anil Kumar sharing with you a question which will help you understand the concept of differentiability and continuity. The question here is for which value of p is the function f of x continuous? The function is f of x equals to px plus p square minus 5 when x is less than or equal to 1 and it is equal to x square when x is greater than 1. I will add part b to this where we will discuss uh, when is f of x differentiable. So we will have two parts to this particular question. We will see how the answers are different and why the answers are different, right? So that is that is very important to understand. So let's do the first part, which is let's talk about continuity of the function. So in part A, now I'll discuss continuity. The given function is a piecewise function. It really means that if I sketch this function, then it should be a parabola x squared for values of x which are greater than 1. So we know that part. So if let's say this is 1, 1 squared is 1. It's kind of a parabola which is kind of going like this. On this side, when x is greater than 1, when we say greater than 1, this point is not included, so we have a hole here, right? So that is what the right side of 1 is. To make it continuous, for the values x less than or equal to 1, it is linear, right? It's kind of a line. px plus p square minus five where p is the slope right so here we know p is slope of line right and y intercept will be p square minus b and y intercept is p square minus five so this line should have value of 1 at x equals to 1. If this line fills up the hole, then it becomes continuous. So this could be a line going like in this fashion or that fashion, depending on what the value of p is. So we'll try to find out that particular value of p. So for continuity, we know that at x equals to 1, f of x should be equal to 1. That is what we know. Right? So that is the condition. So what we have to do here is to make f of 1 equals to 0. That is the whole idea. Correct? So at x equals to 1, I will substitute 1 in both legs of this piecewise function. So if I substitute 1 in the portion which is less than equal to 1, I get p times 1 plus p square minus 5 equals to 1. Correct? So solving this quadratic equation, we get the value of p. So it is p square plus p minus 5 minus 1 equals to 0 or p square plus p minus 6 equals to 0. Now this can be factored. We could write this as p plus 3 times p minus 2 equals to 0. Now this gives us two values of p, right? So that gives us two values of p, that is p is equals to minus 3 or p equals to minus plus 2, right? Both these values will give, will satisfy the given equation. Correct? And therefore, 
we could have two values of p so that is your answer so the function could be f of x could be either if p is 2 then we could write this function as 2x plus 2 square minus 5 for x less than or equal to 1 right this is x square when x is greater than 1 or the function could be written as f of x equals 2 if I write 1 I'm, I mean minus 3 for this then we get minus 3x I'm substituting x equals to minus 3 now plus minus 3 square minus 5 and this is x square for x greater than 1 this is for x less than equal to 1 now you could always simplify the part here as 2x 4 minus 5 is minus 1 correct? for x less than equal to 1 similarly you could simplify this portion and write this as 3x 9 minus 5 is plus 4 for x less than equal to 1 correct accordingly we have two solutions for p so we could write our answer as p equals to minus 3 and p equals to 2 for f of x to be continuous perfect so if you sketch these two what do you get let me sketch them and show it to you so one of the equations is 2x minus 1 that means slope is positive y intercept is minus 1 so it will be kind of like this right so this becomes the first equation when p equals to so for this p is plus 2 the other equation has a negative slope and y intercept of plus 4 right so this equation will be kind of like this correct okay. here p equals to minus 3 so we could sketch kind of like this here p equals to p equals to plus 2 do you see that now from the given diagram we can see that there are two values of p which make the function continuous right now the question is which is part b which we are going to now consider is when is f of x differentiable right So for differentiability, the function should be continuous. So we will check these two values. But what do you conclude from this? We conclude that there could be different values of p for the function to be continuous, but all may not lead to differentiability, right? So the function can be continuous, but still different, not differentiable, right? So clearly, here the function is not differentiable but it could be differentiable for p equals to 2 perfect so that is what we'll now see in the second half of this video so i hope the concept is clear now in part b we'll check differentiability of the given function right so so the question now is for which value of p is the function f of x continuous and differentiable in part a let me remind you in part a we learn that for p equals to minus 3 or p equals to 2 f of x i let me write f of x is continuous right and now we will check the differentiability right so let's check so let's check differentiability
So when we say that the function is differentiable, then in the entire domain, it should have its derivative. That means f dash x exists in its domain. That is what we mean, correct? Now clearly, there are two parts to this. When x is less than or equal to 1, it is a linear function and it is differentiable all in its domain. When x is greater than 1, it is a quadratic function that is also differentiable in its domain, right? However, we have to check whether it is differentiable at 1 or not, correct? So, so we are given the function, we can write what its derivative could be. So, using power rule, so we are going to use power rule, which you have just learned, to check the differentiability. So, we are applying the power rule. So, P is a constant. Remember, P is a constant. Okay, this is important. So the derivative will be px plus p square minus 5 derivative is going to be p for x less than or equal to 1, right? Since p square minus 5 is a constant. And for x square, the derivative is going to be 2x for x greater than 1, correct? So what is the value of this function or derivative of this function at x equals to 1? So what we will do now is substitute x equals to 1. So if I write x equals to 1, I get f dash 1, correct? So f dash 1 is equal to p because I substituted x equals to 1. And in this side, it becomes 2, right? For if I write substitute x equals to 1. Do you see that? So at 1, if we need the same value, p should be equal to 2, right? So, so from here, it is clear. Therefore, p should be equal to 2. Do you see that? p should be equal to 2 since the derivative should be same from both left side and right side. Is that okay? So this could be the de derivative from left, right? This is derivative from left. And that is derivative from right. P should be equal to 2 to make them same. Correct? So what we get here is our answer, which is P equals to 2. Is that clear? I'd like you to sketch this function, right? on a graph paper and see for yourself. So what you will notice here when you sketch the function, so I'm making a very rough diagram, that the function may look like this. If p equals to 2, it will be a straight line. So for p equals to 2, we can write the function. Let me write down the function now. If I substitute p as 2 here, then the function will be, let's write down the function. f of x will be equals to uh, so 2x, 2 square is 4, 4 minus 5 will be minus 1, for x less than or equal to 1, and this is x square for x greater than 1, correct? So 2x minus 1, y intercept of minus 1, will be aligned with slope 2, kind of like this. And after 1, we have the parabola x square so this is the starting and the slope it will go like this so what you notice here is that both get joined here so they are continuous for x equals to 2 p equals to 2 and the slope is also same right the slope is is equal to 2 so that is the derivative so that line itself becomes tangent to the curve at the point x equals to 1. Do you see the whole concept? So what do you notice here? Note.
line is tangent to parabola at x equals to 1. Correct? So what we notice here is that for p equals to 2, the function is continuous as well as differentiable. Perfect. At p equals to minus 3, however, the function is not going to be differentiable, right? So, so if I consider the case when p is minus 3, the line will be kind of like this. And clearly, it has a negative slope, not the positive slope of 2. So, so p equals to minus 3, not, not differentiable. Function is continuous, but it is not differentiable, right? So I hope that point is absolutely clear. So this is what I wanted to emphasize. So from here, you also see that the function could be continuous, but still not differentiable. I hope you appreciate it. Feel free to write your comments and views. And if you like and subscribe to my videos, that will be great. Thanks for watching and all the best.